G'day everyone, welcome back to the Warthog Project. Today's video is part four in the basic series. We're gonna be talking about rotary encoders and POTS and how you can use them in your flight simulator with DCS. All right, quick disclaimer on these basic series. As always, I'm not an electrical engineer. I have no qualifications in aerospace. All the things you're gonna see in this video is just how I built this. I'm showing you how I did it. If you know of a better way, absolutely throw it in the comments down below and let us know. Okay, so welcome back to the workbench. You remember this concoction from the previous couple of videos where we tried using DCS BIOS to get a couple of switches working, a simple LED push button, and a simple LED from the external aircraft model. Uh, I'm going to be using the same thing now, but we're going to be attaching a rotor encoder. You could add this quite easily to this because there's enough pinouts, but just to keep things simple and to avoid confusion, I'm going to remove everything we've already done, and we just concentrate today on a rotor encoder and a pot. So a pot is a, it's a manually adjustable variable resistor, so it's, it's like a, a volume knob. Think of a true volume knob, it's a nice smooth axis and it's got hard endpoints on it. Uh, it's only got three connections, you need VCC, so 5 volts in, ground on the end, and in the middle there is always your signal cable. And then to reverse the directions, you just swap volts and ground around. So when you're connecting your pot, you have to make sure that the signal will only work on an analog pin on an Arduino. You can't connect it to a digital pin. You need to connect it to one of the pins that is an analog pin that starts with an A. If you connect this to a digital pin, it won't work. So one thing to look out for for these is you can see there it says A10K. That means the A at the start means it's an audio taper, which means it's got a curve in it. In simple terms, it's like your control bindings in DCS. So if it was a B, it'd be a linear taper, which means it'd be just fully linear, nice, like a nice straight line in your control curve. And if it was an A, it'd be an audio one, so it'd have a curve in it. I'll show you what that means later when I connect this one up. Throughout the entire cockpit, I've used B10Ks, so it's a, a straight linear curve. Um, I didn't have any spare, so we're just gonna be using an A10K one today. It'll do the same thing, but you'll see the weird behavior. So next up, we're gonna talk about rotary encoders. These two are the exact same thing, however, just different formats. So this one's on a PCB, just makes connecting it easier to an Arduino. You can just use DuPont connectors, and this one's just a standalone unit. I've got different types all throughout the cockpit. Most of them are this one, so this is the one we'll be using today. So the pins out on this, so there's two pins here, that's for the push button switch, and then there are three pins here. The middle one's always ground, and then the two outer ones are the two signal cables on the Arduino. So you need to connect this to two digital pins to let it know that direction and that direction. So it's got little clicks in it. You can see that it spins forever in that direction and forever in that direction. There's no stop, and it's got a push button on it too. Think of it like the radio tune button in your car. It's got little indents in it. These ones are completely different to a pot because they actually output a digital signal. It, it's, it doesn't act like a button press. Each time you click it, it's not a button press. So you can't just connect it to a card and think it's gonna push one button one way and one button the other way. Think of it as ones and zeros. So when, you, when you're turning it this direction, it's going one, zero, one, zero, one, zero. But when you turn it that way, it's going zero, one, zero, one, zero, one. Because these put out a digital signal, you need software or hardware that can decode that signal. You can, there are some USB cards that come with that software. Leo Bodner is a really good. Leo Bodner comes with a configuration tool where you just tell the card which pin you've soldered it to and then you can change all the settings and get it to work. So what we're going to be doing today is just connecting this to DCS BIOS using a cheap Nano and DCS BIOS does all that decoding for you. All right, so there's the circuit basically complete. This is not a soldering tutorial, so so please don't jump in the comments saying I'm I know that. So those two pins there are connected to ground and pin four, that's the push button. And then those three there are connected to ground. So ground's always the middle pin, and then the other two go to two and three. Which order doesn't really matter. You find that you turn, and in the game it turns the wrong way, you just either reverse the pins here or change the pins in your code. Here we are back in the control reference. Let's grab the A10C. Let's um, find something that needs a rotor encoder. So we might make it the one of the radios, I suppose. The UHF. 
so you'll see a whole bunch of things that the UHF has. Let's pick one that we want to use our rotor encoder for. So this 10 megahertz selector, you'll see that it defaults to a multi-position switch with 10 pins. So in the real aircraft, it's a rotary switch with 10 positions, but we don't want to use a rotary switch because they're very expensive. We want to use a very cheap rotor encoder. So all you need to do is go up here and change view from simple to advanced. You can see it opened up and expanded to every single button and switch. You can use anything you want. And you can see right here, here's the 10 megahertz selector and there's a rotor encoder one already done. The multi-position, there's also an analog multi-position. So if you wanted to use a pot, I don't know why you'd want to, but you never know. It also gives you this right here where you can create your own code. So just say you wanted an LCD display to show you which position the switch was on, you could put that code in there and make it all yourself. If you don't know how to code, lots of people have already done it on the forums and they're very willing to share your their code with you. So don't stress too much about this. If, if you've got an idea, say you want the 10 megahertz selector to have an LCD display on it to show you what position it's in, I'm sure somebody's already done it. For today's example, we're just gonna take the rotary encoder. So we'll copy that and we will put it in here and we'll make that pin two and three. So that's telling it that there's a rotor encoder on that and it's going to be pins two and three. Now the push button switch will grab something else for, uh, just go back to simple. The t display test button will do us. So we'll select the display test button and we'll copy that into here and we'll make that pin number four. Yep, so now we will just connect it to the computer. Upload that to the board. Done. Now we'll minimize this and we will fire up DCS BIOS, the command prompt. Minimize that and we'll open up DCS World. All right, here we are in the instant action mission again. Let's scroll down and have a look at our UHF radio over here. All right, you'll see now that when I push this button, the test display works, and when I use the rotor encoder, it changes that knob. Simple as that. So now we'll just jump back into the Arduino IDE and we're going to add another line of code for that potentiometer. Um, we will find something here. Here we go, UHF volume control is supposed to be a pot. So we'll copy that, paste it right there, and it was pin number A1 we made it. Again, you have to make sure it's an analog pin, so pin A1 is the one we used. We will connect that to the board and upload it. Then fire up DCS. Back in the instant action mission again. Let's have a look at our radio over here. You will see that the test button still works, that still works, and now this should control the volume knob. See how that moves? Now you'll notice because this is not a linear pot, there'll be a weird thing where it goes real fast in the middle, like that. So I don't recommend using an A10K, use a B10K, and then you'll get a nice smooth axis. That's why this one was in the spare bin. I wouldn't um, actually use it in the cockpit. But it shows that it works. Now, if, if I found that when I was turning it, it was going the wrong direction, all I'd need to do is swap the five volt and the ground pin around. What I thought I'd do now is just look around the jet and show you where I've used rotor encoders and some of the other things you can do with them. Um, so for example, this one here is a rotor encoder. You can see that I can adjust that. Push button does my labels in the game. So if I push that in, it'll turn off aircraft labels. It'll turn on aircraft labels. This one here, push that in, it toggles my night vision goggles, but it also does the course and the heading as usual. So this is the R210, you'll see that I use rotor encoders for all of these, so when I turn them, you can turn it as normal. I didn't actually utilize the push buttons for anything in there. When you come down to the UHF, you'll see that I use rotor encoders all here. This one here is a correct rotary switch, you'll see that it clicks in three positions. 
that's because I had three position rotary switches everywhere. The biggest issue with trying to fit rotary switches in a panel this tight is that the rotary switches are very large, so you can't actually fit them in the panel in the right dimensions. You'll end up with something about that wide. Um, that's why I chose to use rotary encoders for these, because they're much smaller and easier to hide. But it works just as it would on a normal radio. And if I flick at the preset, you'll see this is a rotary encoder for the, the channel as well. I also use rotor encoders for the intercom panel. Uh, the reason I did this is because in the real aircraft they're pots, but they're push-pull pots. So you can push them in and pull them out to mute it. Um, those push-pull pots are very, very expensive. And also, it's very hard to fit normal pots this close together. So I use rotor encoders, but then I use the push button switch to mute it. And then I connected the backlighting for the labels to the Arduino. So if I wanted to mute it, I just push it. So that's actually live now, but if the backlight is off, it means it's muted. So you can go around and mute all the things you want. And then by looking at the panel, you can tell what's muted and what's not. So if I want the IFF to be unmuted and the three radios, I'll just go like that. Works really well. So coming down to the ILS and the TACAN panel, you can see that I'll use rotor encoders in here as well. So these rotor encoders here will change the channel on the display. However, this one here, if you push it in, actually turns on the power, and I've got the, the backlight turn on. So you can tell by looking at the panel that the power's on. In the real aircraft, it's a different type, like a dual concentric one, with a, a large knob that you flick to turn it on. I, I didn't use that, I used the rotor encoder. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thanks heaps for watching. If you have any questions or comments, just throw them down below, or you can come follow me on Twitch. The link is down below, and you can ask me live one day when I'm streaming. Thanks heaps for watching, and I will see you legends on the next one. Ready to copy. Line is as follows. Ford. One, two, four, thirty, five nautical. Three thousand five hundred feet. MSL. Triple A. Foxtrot. Tango. Two, eight, five, four, one, eight, zero, zero. No mark. Zero. No factor. Egress. West. Ford. Advisement ready for remarks and further talk on. Ready to copy. Request AGM 65D. Foxtrot Tango 28541800 to the west AGM 65. Reback correct. Tusk 1 1. Standby data. Clear to engage. Jack. Attack complete. Tusk one 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 unit destroyed. Reattack is authorized.